Good Day Covenant, and welcome to this year's Earth Day worship service. Earth Day was first celebrated on April 22, 1970, as a way to honor the Earth and to participate in environmental teachings. Since then, the environmental movement has grown in our country and environmental awareness permeates much of our society. Now, our Christian tradition is rich in examples of caring for God's creation and seeking justice for the earth. In Genesis 1, God gave humanity d dominion over the earth to care for it. Part of being human means caring for God's creation. Now, as we prepare to join Christians across the world in celebrating Earth Day Sunday, we must acknowledge that this day is shadowed by the dark reality of the coronavirus pandemic. However, as a pastor, I wonder what hope and joy God's creation may hold for us on this day. As we turn now to worship God and reflect on the earth, I invite you to reflect on this question. What hopeful truth is God's earth teaching you today? Now, may we turn our hearts and our minds and our souls over to God in worship. Amen. Please join me in reading the litany. Hear the proclamation of faith. Christ is risen from the dead. The spirit is poured out. Lives are transformed. God is active in our world. God brings hope and healing. Hear the call of God. The spirit of God invites us into community. We are called to see beyond ourselves and to join in loving care for all of those around us. We accept God's call and we rejoice in the gift of community. Hear the challenge for today. The earth is stressed by the heavy impact of human use. The whole of God's creation is groaning, crying out in pain. We are reminded by God that the earth is part of the community. We extend our love to all of God's creation. We are a people of resurrection. As Christ arose on Easter, God is working to resurrect the harmony intended for all creation. We gather this morning in worship and to join God in this resurrection work. Oh God, sometimes that's as far as we get in our prayers, especially these days. In trying times, God, it's hard to remember that the earth is yours in all its splendor and tragedy. You created sun and water to nourish plants and trees whose seeds and fruit in turn nourish us. You created all the marvelous creatures that fly and swim and creep 
and you saw that all you had created was good. So you went on to create us in your own image and gave us dominion over all you had already created. Forgive us for squandering this incredible responsibility and gift. Help us learn to treat the earth as we do an aging parent who has spent a lifetime nurturing us. Help us learn to return that nurturing care to our Mother Earth. I make this prayer in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Welcome to the Sermon on the Steps. Hi, everybody. Today, I have my grandchildren here. This is Lily. Hi, and here's my caterpillar friend. And here's James. And this is my caterpillar friend. Yeah, they brought, they brought their caterpillar friends. Um, I don't know about you, but we love being outside. All of us do. Um, and you know, we're stuck inside now. And uh, sometimes it's very, very hard to be still, isn't it? 
Isn't it hard to be still when we're inside? It's, it's, it's yeah. cold. Oh, he's cold. So it's kind of hard to be inside and be still. And so when that happens, guess what we do? I don't know if about you people at home, but we go outside. And that's why we're outside right now, because we wanted to, to get out and play. What do you like to do when we come outside? Um, sometimes I want to go to the pool and, and I want to and to the creek and walk in it. Okay, so James and, wants to go to the creek and walk in it. All right, Lily, what do you like pool. to do? In the pool. What do you like to do when we go outside? I like to go in the pool and dance in the pool. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I like to go on hikes, and I like to walk and run and do things outside, and I like to garden. So today we're going to be talking about a Bible verse that's in Psalms, and it goes like this. Listen. Are you listening? Okay. Be still and know that I am God. Let's say that together. Be still and know that I am God. So what does you think that means, to be still? Because it means protection. Okay, it means protection. All right, what does be still mean, Lily? If I say, Lily, I need you to be still, what do you think I'm telling you to do? Because I have to be quiet you and be, quiet be still and, and not move. And not move and okay. die in the rock. All right, that's right. So sometimes I say, be still. So God wants us to be still. All right, let's try that out here, okay? That's not something we usually do when we're outside. We usually are running around. Let's try it. You ready? Let's be real still and see what happens. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, now, friends at home, you might want to try this when you're outside, but you can do it right now. You can kind of be still and see what happens in, inside your house because I know you're watching inside your house. All right, let's try it. Ready? Go. I hear the wind and the birds. So James said he hears the wind and the birds. Lily, what do you hear? I hear the water. Can you hear the water? I think I hear a squirrel. And I see the sun that's shining through the trees. I just and I see some leaves that are kind of drifting down. Wow. You know, we can really pay attention when we be still, right? I'm, so I'm we're being really still really right now. Still. And we can hear the things that are going on on earth. Well, God made the earth. And you know the earth is our planet. Did you know that at home, everyone, that the earth is our planet? And that this week, we celebrate Earth Day. Do you guys know what Earth Day is? Yes. Yes, you're not sure? What do you think it is? What's Earth um, Day? Because you have to, you have to celebrate. We're yeah. celebrating taking care of our Earth. And we want to take care of our Earth by planting maybe new trees, or recycling, or just making sure that we protect our planet, right? And that's what we're celebrating this week. So we want to celebrate God's earth and all the beautiful things that we can see outdoors. And then we can feel God's presence when we're still and we listen to the earth. Okay? So let's say a prayer. Can everybody say a prayer with me? Well, not the right. caterpillar. If the caterpillar can say a prayer, maybe, I think. All right, ready? Close your eyes. We're going to do a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, Dear God, help me, help me be, still be still and know, know that you are God, God and that you love our earth. Then we love your earth. Amen. Amen. I put in Today's scripture reading is Job 12. 7 through 10. But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or the birds of the air, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish of the sea inform you. Which of all these does not know that the head of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all humanity. For the word of God in scripture, 
for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. coronavirus pandemic is many things, one of them being a pandemic of grave suffering. It is a darkness that incessantly threatens our lives with anxiety, loneliness, pain, and death. Now we understand the epidemiology that scientifically explains the virus's spread, yet at its core we cannot explain or justify the pain of suffering and dying alone due to COVID. Nor can we explain or justify the young boy's tears as he is told his mother's ventilator was just unplugged and he can't hold her hand. No justifying words can be offered to the doctors and nurses who are physically exhausted and morally strained as they begin to make triage decisions on who will survive and who won't due to resource scarcity. And what meaningful words can be said to the working class father who was just furloughed and whose daughters cry late into the night because there is no food? These are just a few ways that this pandemic has caused suffering. And a lot of us are gravely suffering now and in ways that will take much longer than two weeks to heal from. Now within Hebrew scripture, perhaps no person understands the painful darkness of suffering better than Job. He endured excruciating suffering. His wealth was destroyed. All 10 of his children were killed. And his entire body from the bottom of his feet to the top of his head was inflicted with searing sores. Yet he was a person of upstanding faith. God introduced him as blameless and upright. Why must he suffer so gravely then? Doesn't God protect those who are faithful to God? And so 
This conflict between Job's faith and his experience of suffering pushes him to the dangerous brink of despair and nihilism. It leads Job to ask, how could God truly be a loving and just God when there is such grave suffering? Is there some divine purpose hidden amidst this suffering? Or has God simply abandoned Job? And this is why he suffers. Job exemplifies a courageous integrity to honestly ask the real questions within his soul. And if we are honest like Job, then we cannot deny that his questions resonate with us today. <coughs> and like Job, we too are a people of faith. And we too are journeying through difficult suffering. We affirm that God is a just and loving God who is always caring for creation. So why then? Why does suffering inflict good people? If God is so just and loving, then why must we suffer? Is there some divine reason for this suffering and for this pandemic? Or has God just simply abandoned us in this is why we suffer. In today's scripture passage, we witness Job, who is in the midst of his despair and nihilism, make a rather perplexing rhetorical move. Job turns to reflect on the wisdom of nature to understand the reality of his suffering. As he says, but ask the animals and they will teach you Ask the birds of the air, and they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth, and they will teach you. And ask the fish of the sea, they will declare to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In God's hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of every human being. This talk is rather perplexing because in the midst of suffering, who turns to nature for answers? Throughout this pandemic, we have been relying upon scientific knowledge, public health expertise, and political leadership to provide us with hope. These sources of knowledge are crucial, yes, but they are rarely hopeful because we have little scientific knowledge of the virus, public health news is constantly grim, and our government is gridlocked. They do not point us to a clear vision of restoration and healing. They only remind us of just how dark the night is. Which is why Job's turn to nature is hopeful. Nature's wisdom unlike human wisdom, provides us with a vision of healing and restoration. Nature does not deny nor ignore the reality of suffering because ecologically woven into nature is the reality of devastation, suffering, and death, embodied within natural disasters like hurricanes and wildfires and earthquakes and tornadoes. Nature excruciatingly attests to the fact that life is always imperiled by suffering. And yet, nature's wisdom also attests to the truth that restoration and healing always emerges in the wake of destruction. We know that from natural disasters aftermaths, ecosystems are replenished, the earth is revitalized, and life is healed. And so here is the hope of nature's wisdom that Job reminds us of. Suffering is only half the truth. The other half is that life is 
full of revitalization, restoration, and healing. God has tethered to creation's ecology of destruction and ecology of restoration so that suffering is never the end. Nature's wisdom attests to the divine truth that after destruction, life always finds a way to gracefully live again. Nature proclaims that God refuses to allow suffering to have the final answer. This was true for Job. It is why, even amidst all his despair, Job could not give up on the belief that God is, at God's heart, a just and loving God. And it's why Job angrily cries out to God, because he knew God would respond. And it is why God never abandoned Job. And it is why God responded to Job. Only a just and loving God responds to those who are suffering. Now, this reflection does not explain suffering, nor does it justify it. There are just some questions about suffering that are impossible to answer. But rather, this reflection is simply a hopeful reminder of faith that suffering is not the story's end. Because as nature attests, it has never been the end. Now, is this an adequate response for those who are especially suffering right now? In all honesty, probably not. In the eyes of the boy who just lost his mother to COVID, nothing can be said to justify his grief. To the exhausted healthcare staff, no words justify their trauma from making triage decisions. To the working class father, nothing can justify his daughter's empty stomachs. But in my honest admission, I am reminded of another one of nature's great truths. That we are in this thing together. As humans, we too are a part of nature. We are a part of God's creation. This means we are tethered together in an interdependent ecosystem which God delicately holds in both of God's hands. And as in any ecosystem, one's actions ripple out to affect others. So when nothing can be said, because really there is nothing that can be said. All we can do is be there for each other. And we need each other now more than ever. We need each other to reaffirm the truth in our lives, that we are loved and cared for amidst our suffering. Love has the power to make our suffering endurable. Perhaps, in drawing us together, we are witnessing another way God is lovingly at work amidst this pandemic. Because as nature attests, God is always working for life amidst suffering. And so this Earth Day, you are invited to join in and participate in nature's wisdom and hope. This past week, several green team members planted a hydrangea bush on the church's grounds as a means of joining in with God and nature in its hopeful restoration. As we prepare to witness this planting, I invite you to take a brief moment to purposefully look out at nature. Notice all the life that is there and all the ways God sustains that life. From the sun shining down, to the nutrients in the soil, to the bugs that pollinate, to the plants that provide food, to the animals 
that wander the earth's ground. Know that you too are a part of this nature because you too are a part of God's creation. And as we prepare to witness this planting, and as you look out into nature, I invite you to reflect upon this question. What hopeful truth is God's earth teaching you today? Let it be so. We are gathered here this morning to celebrate the earth. And we are planting a hydrangea, something native to Alabama, because it is important to give back to the earth as the earth gives to us. Let us pray together. Creator God, as we celebrate the earth, we know we are celebrating you. We thank you for all of creation we ask your forgiveness where we have failed to be just stewards. And we now ask for your guidance in restoring the face of the earth. May we learn to live in harmony, safety, and just sharing of resources among all so that we achieve the kingdom of God. May your peace be on this plant. May your peace be on this community. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.
God, you are the author of creation. It is you who paints the morning sunrise and evening sunset, and it is you who calls us to share our gifts and resources with the world. May we do so knowing the one who calls us forth is nature's creator, the one from whom all blessings flow. Will you please join us for a reading of the benediction? As we go forth from this sacred space, may we celebrate the earth and our shared lives. May we recognize our connections to all that is in and on the earth. May we truly and deeply value the inherent worth of all. In this awesome interdependent web of existence, May, may we, we commit, commit ourselves, ourselves to a new way. way. And may we hold our commitments and each other gently yet firmly. Blessed, Blessed be and amen. amen.